Hello, welcome to another screencast where this time I'll be discussing uh, a little bit about carbohydrates and a little bit about their metabolism. And we can go to a lot of detail of this, but uh, we'll try to keep it a little uh, simple for what we need to know here for digestion of carbohydrates and absorption of them. So you should be able to identify and describe here the monomers of carbohydrates. And again, mono uh, is one, so the single units there. Be able to identify and describe the uh, elements that is... Um, from the periodic table, and identify and describe here examples of mono, di, and polysaccharides. This suffix saccharides here, uh, you should also become uh, familiar with in terms of uh, sugar is carbohydrates. So all of these uh, terms here, carbohydrates, sugars, saccharides, are all dealing with the same sort of family classes of molecules there. Uh, be able to Identify, describe here a little bit about the specific structures of glucose, sucrose, starch, and glycogen, and how they are uh, similar, but then also how they are different. And then uh, by the end here, talk about the metabolism here, enzymes associated with carbohydrate metabolism. That is the, uh, by metabolism, again, we mean the uh, specifically the chemical uh, digestion of them, as well as uh, within the cell. Um, how are carbohydrates being used within a cell? That leads us down here to describing and explaining again the metabolism and then sort of the importance. This is what you know what you want to be leaving this with here is understanding why are, why are carbohydrates important to cells, how they're going to be used. So let's uh, look at this coloring book page here and again we're going to be focusing on the center part here, the green part with the carbohydrates and we ingest carbohydrates in lots of different forms. We ingest carbohydrates as polysaccharides, we ingest them as disaccharides, and we ingest them as monosaccharides, depending on the food stuff that we're eating. But what's important to note here is that the only ones that get absorbed into the bloodstream are the monosaccharides. So any polysaccharides or disaccharides that we ingest, we must first chemically break them down into monosaccharides here. Any monosaccharides we take in uh, do not need any further uh, chemical digestion and they are then easily absorbed. So let's talk about the monosaccharides here. Um, there are many different types of carbohydrates, but what we want to point out here is that all these carbohydrates have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen as the elements uh, that are involved with them, making them up. And so we see here that uh, C6H12O6 are these hexo sugars. These sugars have six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens in them. There are three ones that you need to know uh, and sort of memorize here. One is glucose, two is galactose, and three is fructose. Now what's weird is that they all have the same empirical formula, C6H12O6, but the arrangements of the carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens here are a little bit different, and you can take a look at that, the linear structure there, here versus galactose versus fructose, right? But you don't normally see them as the linear form, you'll normally see them over here as this ring form. And glucose is, again, C6H12O6. You may be looking at this thinking, where are the carbons? And the carbons are here at the vert vertices of this, right? Um, so glucose is often typically just shorthanded as a hexagon. Right? And here's fructose. It's also C6H12O6, but it is a uh, pentagon shape here because it has two of the carbons that are up off the ring. So there would be a carbon there and it would be a carbon. This is, this, is a, this is a carbon here and a carbon here. So here's the carbon and here's the carbon. If you're having a hard time with this ring structure, you may want to come into class and use the molecular model kits to build them. Seeing them in three dimensions often helps a lot of kids figure this out a little bit here. So these are the simple single uh, individual units. These are the uh, monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, and galactose. Any disaccharides or any polysaccharides uh, that we consume in foodstuffs are going to be made of these components or some arrangement of these. For example, let's look at the bottom example here instead. Uh, sucrose is a disaccharide made up of uh, glucose plus a fructose. And so sucrose is known as just this normal table sugar that you would buy in the grocery store. It's a disaccharide, not absorbed across the, uh, uh, from the lumen of the small intestine, has to be broken down. This bond right here needs to be broken by an enzyme. Right, so sucrose is fructose plus glucose. Maltose, the sugar that is in uh, the candy whoppers, right, those little malted milk balls, this is the sugar there, um, is made up of two glucoses, not shown here. 
if you had uh, glucose plus the sugar galactose, the monosaccharide galactose, you'd end up getting the uh, sugar lactose, which is the sugar found in milk. And so again, these are all disaccharides that you should know and be aware of, lactose, sucrose, maltose. Right? In terms of polysaccharides, the important ones are starch. Right? Starches uh, are the way that is actually um, the way that plants store extra glucose. Right? So these are glucoses uh, bonded together, chemically bonded together. And the chemical bonds are represented here. Right? And so here's a glucose and here's a glucose. So this starch molecule is actually a polysaccharide, is a polymer. And this polysaccharide polymer has different uh, reactive characteristics than just one individual glucose. A couple of examples of starch we see are amylose. So here's amylose. And you see that it overall just has this linear form here. Whereas amylopectin, which is another example of a type of starch, here has this branching pattern to it. Regardless, though, uh, amylopectin and amylose are both polysaccharides. They're both polymers of glucose. Right? So that would be an individual glucose molecule there. But again, uh, uh, starch is not a glucose right? because it's been chemically modified by bonding it together. So this is how plants store this. And when we eat plant material, we're eating different types of starches. Uh, down here, this is glycogen, and this is, again, stored glucose molecule. So there's an individual glucose molecule. Right? They are bonded together. Here's the bond uh, to make this. And so glycogen is also glucoses stored together. Um, but this is a polysaccharide that is found in animals. So this is the polysaccharide. And it is stored in uh, muscle cells and stored in the liver cells. Right? And so in animals, when we have extra glucose, uh, we can store it. And here we see the little uh, glycogen granules in the cell. We store it. And so glycogen looks similar to amylopectin or amylose. It looks more similar to this amylopectin because you have uh, this branching nature to it. So there's a branch, right? And here's a branch. And then it branches off here, and you have all these branches. And so this glycogen, similar to but different than this amylopectin. Right? So again, these are examples of polysaccharides that you should be able to uh, explain sort of the difference between. This brings us now to the, uh, the chemical digestion aspect here. And this is what we're going to ingest. Again, we're going to ingest starch. Let's just focus on the starch here for a second. So if starch comes in, we have either, again, the starch is either amylose or amylopectin. And as soon as it enters our mouth, uh, we begin to release salivary amylase, and amylase was an enzyme. Here, the enzyme, this suffix ace here tells you that it's an enzyme. Uh, we'll begin to break down amylose into what? Well, let's go back and look at that a second. So here's amylose. If we, the enzyme is going to be cleaving there and cutting there and cutting there, and so you get individual glucose molecules just coming off of there. And so we're going to break that amylose down. Uh, all the way into individual glucose molecules. Again, these are the monosaccharides. Right? Starch can also be broken down into, in, this is a polysaccharide, you can break it down into an oligosaccharide. Oligo is the prefix that means few. Right? Um, any disaccharides that get broken down there or, or consumed will then also need to be broken down. Again, these are dac disaccharides, lactose, maltose, and sucrose, the ones that we looked at previously. And they have corresponding enzymes that will break those down, right? For instance, lactase uh, would break down lactose. And so lactase is the enzyme that would break lactose down into galactose and glucose. And again, these monosaccharides down here are the things that are being absorbed uh, into the capillary bed or into the, into the bloodstream, right? So if we go all the way back to just the beginning slide here again, that's what I'm showing you here is that again, your monosaccharides, right? Your glucose, your galactose, your fructose, these are the things that get absorbed into the bloodstream and here they are traveling in the bloodstream to get to the cells. So now, why are they important at the cells? Well, again, let's just go left to right here, last slide, right? Uh, this, so polysaccharides, get broken down into individual simple sugars. Again, uh, 
digested here, metabolized into individual monosaccharides. But then those monosaccharides get into the cell, and in the cell, any excess that's not used is going to be stored as glycogen or fat, so we can convert that and store it. And so these are energy storage molecules. Or, most likely, that it gets broken down in cell respiration, aerobic respiration, to get ATP for the cell to use. Right? And so here, this is respiration. We can then uh, break down the glycogen or the fat to run cell respiration. And again, this is the main importance of carbohydrates at the cellular level, is that they are uh, being used in aerobic cell respiration there to make ATP for the cell to run and function. Okay. So, uh, lots to uh, summarize here. Again, just being able to identify some of the monomers and specific ones, the elements involved. Here are the examples of mono, di, and polysaccharides. Being able to switch again between uh, this term saccharide and uh, sugar and uh, carbohydrate. And the structure specifically of glucose, specific structure of, of sucrose, and how starch and glycogen are similar but different from one another. Uh, give me a couple enzymes and examples of how uh, that are involved with carb carbohydrate metabolism. And then explain a little bit about the metabolism of carbohydrates there. That is the breakdown. What do you get from what to what to what? And then the importance why, who cares about getting carbohydrates into into the cells there. Okay, thanks for listening. Bring your questions to class.